Hey everybody, this is Billy Obenauer here welcoming you back to another episode of Using the Open Science Framework or the OSF. This is episode two, preparing your OSF project for peer review with anonymous links. Now this is the first step in anonymizing your research for peer review. It's not the only step, but we're gonna show you in this episode how you can go through and create anonymous links on the OSF so that your identity is not shown in the OSF project itself, okay? So what I've got here is I've got a sample project up on the screen that I created for you. And as you look at this sample project, you can kind of see that my name is all over it, right? You can see William Obenauer removed an anonymous view only link. William Obenauer updated the wiki page. You can see all these things. You can also see that if I was to open the tab here for, for registrations, that I've got a couple registrations that I've made for this project. I've got one that I've embargoed down here and I've got one that's currently live, okay? Now, everything's got my name on it. So if we take a look at this, how do we share this project that's also got documents and registrations? How do we share this for our peer reviewers? Well, the process for sharing it initially is pretty simple. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way up to the right. We've got these three little dots here. And we're gonna cl click create a view only link. Okay, now we've got we're going to move to this screen here and you can see view only links up on the top after we've clicked that. So I'm going to click add and I'm going to put a link name in here and that link name is going to be peer review and I'm going to click anonymize. And if I don't click anonymize here, then it's going to show my name when people use this link. But if I, if I click anonymize, then it, it tells the system to replace my name with a user moving forward. So now I go ahead, I create the link. You can see the link is here. There's a little uh, copy button, so I can copy that link to my clipboard. And let's test it out. Okay, so we're gonna move down here and I've got an incognito window open. I'm gonna paste that link right in there. Hit enter and here's my project. And what you see here is now it says a user created a view only project link, a user removed a view only link a user created a wiki so all those places where it said William Obenauer before it now says a user okay over here you can see my sample documents so my documents still there we could still click on the document um, if we wanted to go ahead and, and see it okay so we can go ahead and click it'll open up a new page all right now you'll notice that this doesn't go right into preview and I've explained that in another video in my episode one so you can go to episode one if you want to see why that wasn't working. But one of the big things that's catching me here is you'll notice that there's no pre-registrations up here. So those pre-registrations that I created aren't here. So what you can see is that this is not our final step in anonymizing our documents. So we're going to go back and go back up here to our document where we're in the, the live view and it's showing the names. And I'm going to go up to my registrations. Okay. And if I open up my registrations, I'm going to open them in a new tab so it's real easy to get back to the first page. I've got a live registration and I've got an embargoed registration. And what I'm going to work with here is I'm going to work with the embargoed registration because I want you to see that this works whether or not it's embargoed. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on, on that project to go into it. Okay, so it tells me about a feature. I say I got it. Now... This is where this gets not really all that intuitive. Once I'm in my pre-registration, I have to go to metadata. And over here on metadata, it shows us all this information that we can edit on the side. And next to where it says contributors, next to where it has my name, I'm gonna click on, on this edit pencil. Brings me to a new screen where I can create another view only link. Okay, so if I go and I create and I click add, and I'm going to make this peer review too. And once again, I'm going to anonymize it. I'm going to create that link. Okay, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to copy the link to my clipboard just like I did before. And now I'm going to go into, into uh, my incognito window. I'm going to open up a new tab. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste that link and go to it. Okay. And what you'll see is this brings me right to that pre-registration, but now for the contributor, it shows anonymous contributor as opposed to having my name. So that's great. How do I simplify this? Well, there, here's the final step. We're gonna go back into our OSF project that we're trying to edit here. 
Okay, we're gonna go back into the, the main page of it, click on sample project, and up here you've got a spot called wiki. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna open up this wiki spot and I'm gonna just paste that link that we just created as plain text and I'm gonna save it. Okay, so now I go back here to the home page on this, and this link is in my wiki. Let's go ahead and test this out one final time. I'm going to go back to my incognito window where we had the project and we didn't have any of our pre-registrations. I'm just going to click in in the top here up where it shows my website address. I'm just going to refresh real quick and you'll notice that that wiki refreshes with it. And as that wiki refreshes, I can click on that and that brings me right to that anonymous pre-registration. So by using a combination of anonymous links and the wiki on the OSF site, we can go ahead and we can completely anonymize our OSF project in terms of what the OSF shows while still sharing our anonymous pre-registration. Hope this video helps you navigate the OSF a little bit cleaner. This will not fully anonymize your project. There's also some work we have to do in our files, and I'm going to cover that on my next episode. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope this video helps you to use the OSF more frequently in your own research so that we can improve transparency in science and support open science. So thank you so much for watching this, and we'll talk to you soon.